Good evening and welcome catfish anglers. My name is Greg Binion and I'm a district fisheries biologist with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Inland Fisheries. Foremost, I want to thank you guys for agreeing to participate in our catfish webinar presentation and in providing us feedback on some potential catfish regulation options. We are very excited and look forward to providing some background on where we have been with catfish management in Texas and where we might be going with some new regulation options for the management of our catfish populations into the future. So our first presenter will be Dave Terry. Dave has worked for TPWD for over 35 years and he is our chief of our fisheries management and research branch. Dave's guidance and leadership has been instrumental in this initiative and in moving the management of catfish forward over the last 10 to 12 years. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dave. Well, thank you so much, Greg, for those kind words. Uh, I wanna really reach out to you and say thank you for your service and all the work that you've done behind the scenes to, uh, uh, to help us come with these options for catfish management, specifically regulations. Um, you know, we recognized a long time ago, really, that catfish are currently the second most sought after fish by Texas anglers in the state. And these fish have great potential to provide quality fishing long into our future. So Texas Parks and Wildlife began stepping up its efforts to study and manage these fisheries in about 2008. One of our very first steps was to survey our anglers to determine their needs and desires for catfish fishing. In that survey, we discovered that anglers had a very diverse set of needs, including fish harvest, high catch rates, and opportunities to catch a few big fish. So in 2015, we took the results of that angler survey and developed a statewide fisheries management plan for catfish. This plan highlighted some goals for our future and suggested that adjustments in our harvest regulations might be, in, might be an important tool to help us meet the needs of our anglers statewide. In 2017, we assembled a small team of biologists to explore possibilities of regulation changes. Our approach was to find some new regulation options that would enhance and diversify fishing opportunities consistent with the needs and desires of Texas anglers. The general thought going into this process was that the current statewide 12 inch size limit might not be doing enough to protect our populations for the future or to keep our catfish fishing great. Another goal in our process was to do all we could to keep our regulations simple. One way we thought about doing that is standardizing rules between channel catfish and blues wherever we possibly could. We also wanted to keep the number of regulation options to an absolute minimum to reduce complexity and hopefully improve angler compliance. This team continued to work and conducted research and studied Texas reservoirs intensively to find these regulation options that would work and be biologically effective. Our hope was to find a single option that might cover most Texas waters, but we also needed to have a few additional options to address some common problems we might see in catfish populations or to create some really unique special fisheries if it could be supported by the lake's biology. We recognize that any option we explore must be acceptable to anglers. We understand clearly that regulations will not work if anglers don't comply with them. We see you, the catfish angler, as our customer and want to make fishing as good as it can be for everybody. That includes you, your kids, and your kids' kids. Today, we need your feedback on some of, the, some of these potential options. I want to remind you that this is just the very first step in a long process for getting public input. What you say will influence our decisions and cause change as we get further down the road to an actual proposal. It would be our goal to make a proposal to our commission next January 2021. 
we want to make sure that this proposal is in fact a product of anglers and biologists working together. So thank you so much for your time today. And with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. John Tibbs. John, John was the leader of this group of biologists that have been exploring these regulation options uh, you know, for about two years now. So I wanna personally say thank you to John for his leadership on this committee. And he's excited now to present some of the different options that we're considering. Take it away, John. Thanks so much, Dave. I'm happy to be here. And I wanna echo Greg's thanks for your efforts to improve catfishing in Texas as well, and especially your guidance to our committee. And now thank you to all of you anglers who have taken time out of your schedule to be here today. I'll do my best to make it worth your while. I want to assure you that the development of these regulations included contributions from literally every biologist in the state over the past few years. Reservoir sampling, research projects, computer modeling, and angler surveys were all important components that have led us here today. Let's focus on in on what we are discussing today. You're gonna to hear about four new regulations that will be more effective at maintaining and improving catfish populations across Texas. As Dave said, they combine blue and channel catfish and are designed for reservoirs and rivers. You will see no change in flathead catfish. We also won't be discussing the community fishing lake regulation used in small local ponds and lakes. Reservoirs we share with Oklahoma and Louisiana also are not the focus of our discussion today. Lastly, the relatively new graduated bag regulation on Tawakoni is in the process of being evaluated, so it will stay on the books at least for a while. There are three major components that affect the quality of a catfish population, and these are what biologists look at when determining if a regulation will work biologically. Spawning and recruitment refers to how many new fish are entering the system. Growth is pretty straightforward and is how fast fish grow within the population. Mortality is comprised of natural deaths as well as harvested fish. Regulations directly address the last component by reducing and or directing harvest and that is where pop catfish populations and subsequently catfish anglers benefit the most. They can, in some cases, also indirectly affect the others by reducing competition at certain sizes to increase growth or protecting, protecting brood fish until they become mature and increasing spawning and recruitment. I will refer to these throughout the presentation to help illustrate where each regulation might be best used. Now this slide shows uh, a standard bell curve that you might see anywhere, but this one represents all the catfish populations in Texas. As you can see, only a small subset uh, percentage have issues that other <clears throat> have issues or other situations that may require a special regulation. Another percentage, which are small, are the populations that are high quality trophy or possess characteristics that will allow the population to be improved to that level. Each of those represent about 10%. The rest are in the middle of the bell curve. Most of these are solid catfish fisheries that are well served with a single regulation, as Dave said. About 80% of our catfish populations fall into this category at the present time. If we look at this graphic, it's somewhat busy, but you will see catfish size on the X axis at the bottom and relative abundance on the Y axis to the left. These populations would have average spawning and recruitment rates as well as average mortality with no excessive harvest. They would have slow to average growth rates. Some will have blue, large blue catfish present and almost all will produce channels or blues larger than 20 inches. So solid fisheries. For these populations where a statewide regulation is appropriate, we propose the following. And these are for channel and blue catfish combined. No minimum length limit. Daily bag limit of 25 fish in, com in combination. And of the 25 fish bag, no more than 10 can be 20 inches or longer. Very few anglers harvest more than 10 catfish over 20 inches. And our data shows that in the vast majority of cases, anglers will not be impacted. 
Our statewide catfish survey showed that most anglers aren't very interested in trophies. Rather, they want to catch catfish to eat, and this regulation is designed for that. The current statewide minimum length limit it replaces does not protect quality size catfish, and due to changing angler attitudes, is unnecessary in almost all reservoirs. An additional benefit is that the large number of casual anglers we see in our on the water angler surveys will have an extremely difficult time accidentally breaking the law with this regulation. So in summary, this new statewide regulation is more effective, reflects the majority of anglers desires, and is simpler for new anglers, and in fact, all anglers. But there are a few water bodies which do need protection of smaller fish. And these fall on the left side of that bell curve. This is the first of our three special regulations, which are exceptions. Again, we are looking at size on the x-axis and abundance on the y-axis. In this case, we see a population with possible recruitment issues, not a lot of small fish, and excessive harvest, not a lot of large fish. While growth may be good, in rare cases, catfish may be removed faster than they can be replaced in a fishery. Intervention is needed to maintain a quality fishery. For these, we propose the following. For channels and blue catfish, minimum length limit of 14 inches and a daily bag of 15 in any combination. Again, this is applicable only to a few reservoirs and potentially some river segments. It will only be used in situations where there are concerns that excessive harvest could damage the population. A survey of our biologists showed that less than half a dozen reservoirs where this regulation might be needed. Another exception is illustrated with this slide. This relates to very large reservoirs, generally in East Texas, where recruitment is high, growth is good, and anglers are very harvest oriented, consumptive in nature. We also see a lot of passive gear, such as trot lines and jug lines as the norm for fishing approaches. With such large productive reservoirs, over harvest is extremely unlikely despite all of that. We propose the following, no minimum length limit, a daily bag of 25 in any combination, and of that, no more than five can be 30 inches or longer. This regulation is not designed to increase quality or trophy potential of a catfish population. Rather, it just provides some protection from incidental overharvest of large catfish. There is a similar regulation on Toledo Bend shared with Louisiana, so that is a type of reservoir we are talking about here. Local angler surveys showed high support for this type of regulation, and as mentioned many times, our goal is to be responsive, responsive to you, our anglers. The last regulation exception deals with the upper end of the bell curve. The reservoirs where high quality blue catfish populations exist or can be created, including the possibility of trophy fish. These would generally have good recruitment with low overall mortality. Fish in these populations would exhibit average to fast growth. Ideally, there would already have been some large blue catfish caught, and the reservoir would have an active contingent of anglers desiring high quality or trophy blue catfish angling. For these, no minimum length limit, daily bag limit of 25 combined. Of that bag, no more than five can be 20 inches or longer, and only one of those can be 30 inches or longer. This is obviously very similar to the graduated bag regulation on Tawakoni, although it is a bit more restrictive. This would impact blue catfish anglers disproportionately, especially trot liners and jug liners, but they would also have the most to gain with an improved population. A survey of our biologists showed that currently we have less than a dozen reservoirs that meet this criteria, although additional research underway may increase this number somewhat. While it is designed to improve blue catfish populations, it will also serve to maintain quality in channel catfish populations. In reservoirs where we have enacted regulations with similar goals, such as the big slot, we have seen widespread support from our anglers. This includes Tawakoni. Our statewide survey also documented an angler contingent who desire improved quality and trophy opportunities, and this regulation is for them. It directs the harvest to smaller, easily replaceable fish 
and protects the middle size, medium sized fish and larger fish while still allowing anglers one large fish. So there you have it, our, our proposed statewide regulations for your consideration, as well as our three exceptions addressing possible overharvest, consumptive anglers, and lastly, improving quality and trophy potential. We need your feedback at this time, so we will be answering your questions live. Start typing. If you have a question or comment, please submit it now. This time I'm going to turn it back over to Greg Binion, and he will be divvying up the questions among the three of us to get you the best answer we can. Thanks, John and Dave. Excellent job providing some context as where we are with catfish management, as well as an overview of our proposed suite of catfish regulation options. I think um, we've got a few questions coming in here. I'm going to start off with you, Dave. Um, so one angler would like to know uh, what other opportunities will there be for us to give input on these regulations and where do we and what do we do from here? In other words, what are our next steps? Absolutely. Um, Greg, like I said, this is really the first step in getting some feedback from you, the active catfish anglers out there. Uh, Probably as a second step, what I would do is I would uh, uh, reach out to us and we'll give you some information on how to connect with us. Um, or you can connect with your local fisheries biologist. You can do that at any time. Our biologists are scattered across the state in almost every major city, and we'll be glad to hook you up with them. As far as we go, uh, right now, we're just introducing these concepts right now, and we expect to collect, collect feedback between now and really next January. In next January, uh, we plan to go to our commission and perhaps make a proposal uh, for some adjustments to our catfish regulations. That proposal will be the product of us all working together uh, to come up with some options that are acceptable by the angler and that would work with the biology of the lake. Uh, we'll first present some early ideas of what we're thinking about to our commission in November but it's January generally is when we will set a, uh, a proposal. Once we present that to the commission, if the commission gives us approval, we'll go out for public comment on an official set, of an official proposal. That usually takes place between mid-January and early March. Uh, we'll have a few meetings across the state to talk about this. We'll also do some online sessions similar to what we have right now where you can give us feedback. We'll also have a forum on the internet where you can uh, connect on our website and give us your opinions about uh, the proposal that is offered to our commission. And then in March, our commission will make a decision on whether we'll go forward with this or not. And if we do, it would go into effect September 2021. So basically, we have a whole year to work with you to come up with some options that are acceptable to, to us all. But first start and connect with your local fisheries biologist. I know many of you are wondering which one of these regulations is gonna work uh, is, is best for my favorite fishing hole. Our biologists survey those lakes. They have a really good understanding of the biology of those lakes. They also wanna hear from you about what your catch experiences are. We can match those two together and we can get on the same page. So thank you, Greg, for that question. Uh, is there any other part of the question I missed? I think you covered it, Dave. Um, while I got you, I'm gonna I'm gonna tee another one up for you. Uh, I've got an angler. He's asking about uh, harvest methods and methods of take for catfish, and this angler would like to know um, how come catfish are the only game fish allowed to be taken by other means than rod and reel. Well, it just goes back a long time. You know, I think, uh, you know, jug lines, trot lines, you know, are just part of the, the culture of catfish angling in Texas. And it's been a part of our fisheries for a long time. Uh, we know based on our surveys that even with allowing those, those gear types of trot lines and jug lines, it's not having any type of negative impact on our fisheries and we monitor that. And I'm also talking about hand fishing too, as well, which came onto the scene a couple of years ago. You know, in general, if we look at our catfish populations across the state, we got great catfish populations, by and large, that are largely unexploited. 
And, uh, you know, it just makes a great resource for us to enjoy fishing long into the future. So uh, that's catfish. And most of y'all may not know this, but uh, um, there's actually a commercial fishery for catfish in Texas. But they, the commercial anglers, um, there's a few of them, they can only use the gears and methods that you can as recreational anglers. And they have some special size limits that they need to comply to themselves. Uh, it's a 14 inch minimum size limit, as a matter of fact. They're pretty limited and they're kind of leaving uh, Texas, but uh, uh, um, catfish is one species that uh, can be caught with multiple gears. And I'd say it's just part of our history and a lot of people enjoy it. And we want to provide fishing for all anglers. Trot line anglers, jug line anglers, they buy fishing licenses just like we do for rod and rail. Um, and as long as it's not exploiting our resource, we think we're in good shape. Hope that answers the question, Greg. Yeah, I think you nailed that one, Dave, as far as explaining that, that we do monitor um, our premier catfish fisheries with our creel surveys, and we have a pretty good handle on harvest and uh, the amount of take that's coming out in a lot of these fisheries. Um, and they, they, they do, based on those creel data, um, um, are, are pretty sustainable. Um, Absolutely, you know, and, and there is, I uh, do mention that there's a little bit of commercial fishing that goes on across the state and it only happens in a few counties across Texas. And these are folks that have been doing it for a long time and, you know, their livelihoods depend on it and they've been basically grandfathered to continue to that, but under great restrictions. Thanks, Dave. I got another one for you. Um, this angler would like to know, and it might be, it might have been a little bit early in this process because we're still currently uh, scoping this with, with our anglers, and this is kind of just the start of that, but they would like to know if law enforcement input um, has been has been taken on the enforcement of multiple regulations. Absolutely. You know, enforcement, we work side by side with our game warden brothers out there. Uh, we've worked together very closely with them on hand fishing rules. You know, hand fishing came onto the scene thanks to our Texas legislature not too long ago, and many people were concerned about those big fish being taken out of our reservoirs. We launched and did a study on that. We worked with our game wardens, communicated with them, and we found out that hand fishing at its current levels is not damaging our, our fisheries, so we're good to see that. But, you know, we need our game wardens out there to enforce the rules that uh, we lay out there that work with the anglers and work with the biology of the lake. So anyway, uh, yes, uh, law enforcement is key to the success of this equation. Thanks for that, Dave. Uh, I'm going to send one over to you, John. Let's see here. Uh, this angler would like to know if uh, a list of the trophy potential water bodies uh, could potentially be provided to anglers basically a list of, of what lakes might have trophy potential or what lakes uh, do have an abundance of trophy catfish. That's an excellent question and I would say that that list is currently being developed. Early on in this process uh, we did a, a survey of our biologists across the state to see if they would provide some of those lakes that they thought um, would be a potential um, candidate for this type of regulation. Um, I can speak for myself. For example, we've got Waco, which currently has a slot limit on it. Um, that has been effective and it would be one that we would consider um, moving forward into a, a new, more effective regulation. Um, and so <clears throat> the short answer is we're still working on that. And any recommendation to that effect would be scoped in, in meetings later. And so that's, I think that covers that question. It's not going to be a gotcha where all of a sudden somebody shows up and we've got this regulation on their leg. We are going to obtain <clears throat> angler input all the way through. And if there's, I guess I want to echo what Dave said earlier is if you have a, a lake where you think that you're catching a lot of big fish and you want to share that with your biologist, and you think it would be a good candidate, call them, talk with them. It's a, it's a 
it's a give and take where we can share information with you. You can share information with us. And at that point, we can decide which lakes might have uh, a, a need for such a regulation. Because as I pointed out in my presentation, um, those lakes that have a contingent, an active contingent of blue catfish anglers looking for trophies, looking for quality fish, are the ones that we're looking to possibly enact one of these regulations on. Okay, very good. Thanks, John. I'm going to stick with you for the moment, John. I've got a question here from an angler. It says, I don't really understand the graduated bag regulation. Could you explain it again, please? Well, on the surface, it looks somewhat difficult, um, but it's not really. Uh, we are going to work with anglers on this. We plan to have some education if this is ultimately something that we're going to go with. Um, but the simple answer is, is that if we take the statewide, for example, if you catch a fish, if it's over 20 inches, you got nine more that you can keep after that if you decide to keep that one. And so you simply need a single measuring device to measure those fish and it's 10 over 20. So it's not really that much different than measuring a fish and saying, is it less than 12 inches or not? It's the same concept. It's just we're protecting serving to protect those mid-sized fish, which we think uh, provide the quality fishing. And also if you protect those, uh, they may grow into trophies one day. Um, and at a bare minimum, they will stay in that quality size location in the, in the size distribution and people can catch them. So um, that's what the concept of the graduated bag is. When you look at our quality slash trophy reg, it's only five over 20 inches that we're talking about at this point and we add an additional length which is 30 inches and so that's a one over 30 inches so if you catch five fish over 20 inches you've reached your limit and only one of those can be over 30 inches and you can keep 25 total fish and that's 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 pretty straightforward Okay, thanks, John. Dave, I'm coming back to you for one. I've got a couple comments here about protection for fish over 30 inches um, in every lake in a limit of one. So this question is kind of relates to the, I, I believe, a statewide, and they're asking why why is there not further protection of larger trophy trophy fish like a one over 30 in the statewide? Well, you know, uh, great question. Um, you know, Texas Parks and Wildlife, uh, we don't work just in a vacuum just in Texas. You know, we connect with other states um, that are also working on catfish. And there are some states that have adopted these one over rules. And the general thinking was, well, that of course protects big fish. Well, our modeling and our data uh, would suggest, and I think most other states would agree, that the most important fish to protect in a catfish fishery when you're looking for big fish is to protect those intermediate size fish. The more of those fish that we can, can conserve, the better chance you'll get for those fish recruiting to larger sizes in the future. So I, we think that the best, the best focus is to focus on their intermediate size fish and keep their numbers high so that they grow and recruit into these large trophy sizes. Then on the trophy reg that we're suggesting here, we do have some measure of protection for a very, very large fish. So we do include that option at least in one of our regulation sets for trophy fish. You know, it's about it's about the biology of the lake and what the lake can support and how many fish these anglers are taking out of it. And I, our, our biologists have a very, very good handle on that. And we think in general, if we want some bigger catfish, in our lakes, including trophy fish, it's best to protect those intermediate sized fish, which these regulations do. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Dave. Um, John, I'm coming back to you for one. I'm seeing a couple comments about slot regulation. So can, so we already have a regulation for big fish, the slot limit. 
Um, so why why change that if it's if it's already working? Thanks, Greg. That um, that's a really good question. I will say that the SWAT limit, which we enacted in 2009 on Waco, uh, Louisville, and Richland Chambers, was um, was done with the best science at the time. And I was one of three biologists that agreed to put it on our lakes. Um, and we came up with it based on the fact that it was similar to the catch photograph release of 10 pounds or greater fish that was popular. Um, probably still is uh, to some degree. Um, it has been very effective. And I would like to say that it was due to an amazing amount of forethought but in fact, it was not. Um, we did it with the best science we had at the time, and we've had a whole bunch more research done since then. We've looked at a lot of other angler desires. We've gotten better information on what our anglers want. And what we found is that we made that too large. 30 inches is just too big to protect, um, to, put, to, to start the protection. And so <clears throat> with the new regulation that we're proposing, the graduated bag, we have a lot of protection, as Dave mentioned, on those mid-sized fish, 20 to 30 inches. And we do have a lot of evidence that that is acceptable to our anglers because when we look at those slot limit lakes, we see harvest stop around 25 inches on blue catfish. Uh, and what that tells me is that anglers are choosing voluntarily to release fish uh, that are approaching that slot because they believe that it's going to work. Um, we're simply acknowledging that fact, protecting them a little bit more and making that across the board for specifically those type of quality and trophy legs. And so while I really like the slot limit, it was kind of my idea, um, we've got something better and we've got a whole lot of biologists that have done a lot of work to show that. Thanks, John. Um, Dave, coming back to you for one, uh, this angler would like to know how might these regulations be applied on my favorite lakes locally? Yeah, um, the best way to, 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 you need to connect with your local fisheries biologist. For example, if it was Lake Waco that you're fishing and we're interested in, Lake Waco is next to Waco and that's where John Tibbs works. Uh, we have two biologists over there. Uh, John and Michael Baird, they would be eager to meet with you and talk about your fishing experiences, what you're seeing, and also sharing the, the information that we've collected on your favorite lake. And uh, so that's how we're going to get to some consensus, I think, about what regulation option to use on specific water bodies. The biology of our uh, catfish populations generally statewide say that, you know, about 80% of our reservoirs, we could use one regulation, uh, which we've presented today, and and be able to secure good quality catfish fishing for blues and channels uh, from now into the future. Uh, so connect with your local fisheries biologist. That's the best way to find out. Uh, at the end of our presentation here, we will have an email address. It's actually John Tibbs's email address. You can email him and tell him uh, there it is right there, John Tibbs at Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, dot Texas dot gov. If you email John and tell him where you're fishing, John will reach out and connect you with your local fisheries biologist and then you can have a conversation throughout this year. And eventually we will be asking our biologists to give us their recommendations on their individual water bodies on which option would best fit and staff are still kind of working on that right now. We need your input. So that's what I have to say about that there, Greg. And uh, and if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to answer that. I, I got one more for you, Dave, ready to go. Um, in your statewide angler survey, what did most anglers want in their catfish fishing? Uh, what percent of them actually wanted to fish for and catch trophy fish? Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, most catfish anglers, over half of them, about 60% of them, want either high harvest or high catch or both high harvest and high, high catch. You know, about 32% of our anglers, the main motivation for them going fishing is 
to get outside and relax and enjoy time with family and friends um, and where the catch experience might be actually secondary to the outdoor experience. And that's that's a good thing. And, and a lot of us go fishing to connect with our children or connect with our family um, to enjoy some good quality time outside. What we found in our survey is about only 8% of our, of our catfish anglers um, go specifically to try to maximize the size of fish they can catch. So we believe that the regulation option that John presented to you, uh, you know, covering about 80% of our reservoirs fits real well with that uh, balance of anglers that we have out there. That statewide limit, we believe, will provide high catch and, and some good harvest opportunity and opportunities to catch occasional big fish. And then there's a few lakes out there that really have the potential to produce these trophy fish. And we know most of what those lakes are. They already produce big fish. Uh, about 8% of our anglers sp uh, uh, sp specifically fish for just big fish. So I think it's a real good balance, Greg, uh, anyway. But happy to share a copy of that uh, angler report. Uh, we also have a copy of our our statewide management plan, and this is available on the website. So if you look at your screen right now, you'll see a web address there, Catfish Management Plan. Uh, go there, we'll be happy to mail you a copy or you can download a copy off the web. And also, if you'd like to see our current fishing regulations, those are also um, available on our website, on our outdoor annual. So, but. Why don't you, if you got any additional questions or, or concerns or just uh, feedback, good and bad, uh, email John Tibbs and let us know what you think. Uh, we're trying to make catfish fishing great in our state. Uh, we recognize that we have a great resource that we could manage and take to a totally new level. Just give us opportunity to do that and we need your support to do that. So I'll sign off on that, Greg. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, also like to recognize the man behind the curtain, Chris Cummings, who, who has been working hard with us, uh, he's also in Waco, to put on this presentation. He's kind of our, our guy behind the curtain there that's making these visuals work and making the communications work. So let's give it up for, for uh, Chris. All right, thanks Dave, I appreciate that. Um, I've got a few more questions here. If we didn't get to your question, um, we have them logged and we will follow up with you. Um, and if you have additional questions, like Dave said, please reach out to John Tibbs. Uh, he's kind of our, our catfish guy and he will either direct you to the appropriate local district biologist or he'll address it himself. Um, but I, I realize we do have a couple more questions here and, and we will follow up with you, with you folks on that. And uh, we absolutely appreciate you taking some time out and listening to our presentation and, and providing some feedback.